somebody here from Florida. Don't be a hater. Just because <laughs> Florida is where all the action is, you know, that's where they send spaceships off to the moon or wherever they're going. You know, just don't hate him because they have sunshine more than you do. That's not fair to this man. This man has dedicated his life to teaching children. And thank you for that service. And he makes people laugh in Florida. So I'm going to read you a little bit of what I found. He sent me this bio, you know, intro, and he said I can pick and choose. So I'm going to pick and choose what I find interesting. Okay. So he says that he's originally from Tucson, Arizona. I still haven't figured out how to spell Tucson. It's not phonetic. <laughs> <laughs> I have to take another class to learn that one. He's the son of a car thief and a bartender. My dad was very much like the car thief. We'll get into yeah. that. And my mother was a bartender bar owner. So we have that in common. That's he has cool. a long string of history centering around being a Mormon, his involvement. Many, many, he played the violin in school. I did too. Oh, you know, cool. this taught school for five years. Fortunately, I never did that. Your children are safe. Your grandchildren are <laughs> great. Show. In his, he did 400 comedy sets in his first two years of comedy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I didn't do that. <laughs> he almost got divorced the third year. I'm yeah. slow. It took me till the seventh year and I wasn't even doing comedy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they say about bad luck, right, Bill? He has a channel on YouTube working on a Roku channel called Bars of Polk County. And he's been influenced by George Carlin. He just did the George Carlin thing, didn't you? That <laughs> I <so>? guess so. <laughs> he was influenced by Woody Allen. Oh my gosh. I think he means the comedy influence. Yeah, yeah, the comedy. Uh, the personal yeah. life we can do without. Yeah, not the young ba <laughs> baby nanny. Um, uh, he was influenced by Bill Burr, Jerry Seinfeld, Arjund Barker, and Doug Stanhope. Oh my gosh, let's get to know this guy. He sounds kind of interesting. In fact, I think it's a good thing we have him on Comic Spot. See? Uh, thank this you so much. Hi, Bill Kirkpatrick. How are you doing? Well, hey, Linda. How are you? It's good. Wonderful. This is such a neat technology, huh? I know. We look like we're on like late night. They're not doing any better than I am right now. This That's is right. Like, yeah, we're know? right on par with those guys. I can get this a laugh great. track going. <laughs> there. You're more I'll on. Use you. <laughs> I'm going right. to use you for my laugh track. You're a good laugher. <laughs> well, so, keep them coming. Uh, where are you at in Florida? Tell everybody. You told me earlier, but I'm going to have you tell everybody. I am, I'm in Lakeland, uh, a city that nobody in Lakeland pronounces. It's not Lakeland. That's how it, you know, reads out. But everybody calls it Lakeland. Like it's, uh, I don't know, Lake Lynn. But uh, yeah, I'm halfway between Tampa and Orlando. So wow. this is uh, the rednecky part right in between um, Tampa and Orlando, the big cities of Florida, nice. so it what, is do pe what do people do when they're not being a comedian on their time off in Lakeland? Um, you know, people go golfing, people go hunting. Um, there's a race way uh, in Auburndale. If Florida's got all these little tiny little towns and cities that are connected. I'm used to Arizona where it's like <laughs> big metropolis, then nothing, and then, <laughs> you know. You know, giant elephant feet, but uh, Florida just all mingles, so it's kind of fun. Uh, but yeah, people people like to get out. They got get out and have fun. Uh, I used to go to the movies when they made them, so that was nice. Yeah, that's a, yeah. That's a dead duck right there. 
Uh, we have ducks, so that's nice too. Yeah, what ducks kind of ducks awesome. do you have? Any special kind? White that ones with webbed feet. <laughs> I love ducks because they don't care about gluten. You know, it's all just bread. So I like that. But yeah, yeah that's a uh, good point. They call Lakeland Swan City. No way. I guess because of the swans. You know what also has swans? Every place in Florida. So <laughs> what about flamingos? Everybody used to have one of them pink ones in their yard when I was growing up. Right. Right. Yeah. I remember those. I had neighbors with pink flamingos. We do have flamingos. Uh, it's weird because this is just wildlife. It just, it'll land in your backyard. It'll walk through your front yard. Uh, it's weird. We take the land away from the critters and then they take the land away from us. <laughs> That's cool. So yeah. I want to know where you were born and raised. Uh, Tucson, Arizona, out in the desert. Um, I think it's about 45 miles from the Mexican border. So it was kind of fun. Um, you said that already. Flying. I wasn't oh, yeah. I was too busy okay. thinking what I was going to say next. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. You do you. Uh, my parents split up when I was five, so I ended up in the desert of Ajo, which is uh, on the way to Gila Bend. Aren't these wonderful places? So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this funny? <laughs> it's weird because um, in Arizona, they got mountains. You, you don't need GPS. You just need to look up. All right, there are the Santa Catalinas. I'm going north. Uh, you get to yeah. Florida, and there are no mountains. It's like six feet above sea level. And so uh, you don't know where you're going. And yeah. uh, the night my dad uh, picked us up from the airport, uh, he drove back to Lakeland. It's like 40 miles. And uh, he kept getting lost and going to St. Pete, then going to Clearwater, then going back to St. Pete. Uh, somebody said, you can't get there from here. <laughs> we got home six o'clock in the morning. So it was, uh, yeah, the old man, the old man had the navigational skills of Christopher Columbus. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So. You grew up in Tucson and your parents got divorced and you went to Florida and did their divorce make you start coping with comedy? Um, when, when did your comedy rear its beautiful head? My, my sister lived with my mom and my brother and I lived with our dad. Uh, my dad was an alcoholic and so we didn't we get- We have all this in common. Much. This is, this is exactly like my life. Go ahead. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Twins from different moms. Yeah. Uh, so you, you kind of like you're on your own. You got to figure stuff out. I used to watch a lot of uh, black and white TV, Gilligan's Island and the, you know, the Honeymooners and the Brady Bunch. And, and so you kind of develop that. You just, you know, all the sitcoms, you hear all that stuff. And I think for my, my brother and sister, we kind of, one of the things we bonded together is we'd watch the eighties. Uh, that's when I came of age. Uh, it was, it's kind of like the golden age of the comedy club. And, uh, we used to watch this stuff as a showtime and, uh, HBO had stuff. So we would watch this stuff and we started when they came out with, uh, uh VCRs, we would record all this stuff and we'd get together and watch this stuff. That was kind of our fun thing to do. And, um, uh, I, it's really funny, you know, little Steven Spielberg had that, was that um, Super 8 camera, right? Um, my parents didn't have that kind of cash, but uh, Real to Real had gone to cassette and like in the mid to late 70s, cassette players were, they were just spitting them out, like coming out of vending machines. Everybody had a, a cassette player. And uh, so I would get that. And my brother and I would go see movies and then we'd come home and we would do skits and we put that, and so it's kind of like, we were thinking like the DJs on the radio, and we were thinking about, you know, there's Cheech and Chong, there are all these various um, sort of radio kinds of dramas and little comedies, and that's what we were trying to do. And so it kind of put a seed in my head. So in your life, who were people that told you you had comedy chops? Uh, you know, it's really funny because, uh, I would meet a lot of people and they would all go, Oh, you ought to become a stand up comedian. But I didn't have the grit to do that. I was scared to death. I couldn't tell my old man, my old man, you know, uh, that I was going to be a comic. Uh, so I, I just actually went the conventional route and I ended up becoming a lawyer. Uh, no just, way. yeah. <laughs> 
it's okay. My, my practice was comedic. So uh, <laughs> very laughable. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, everybody I knew would tell me I had to become a comic, but I, yeah. I today you have a path. You can go on YouTube and learn about anything, uh, master's classes. The amount of information that's out there is just phenomenal. But when I was a kid, I remember the adults in my life were like, I'd say, I want to go into entertainment. And they're like, mm, I don't think so. Like, why not? Well, you live in Tucson for one thing. <laughs> they're not making movies in Tucson. Well, there's old Tucson. There's a little cowboy studio, but it's like, eh, you're not you got to have connections. And uh, so I grew up thinking, well, okay, thing I want to do isn't going to happen. So I guess uh, I better go find some, like a day job. So uh, I became a lawyer um, and I did what that. What kind of lawyer? Uh, a really bad one. <laughs> <laughs> I practiced law for five years. So my clients figured out I was just practicing, you know, for 300 bucks an hour. Nobody wants to be the pop quiz. Um, <laughs> But no, I, I did a lot, I, they call it door law. I did everything and went through the door, uh, but mostly criminal defense. I really enjoy criminal defense. And I think it's just because uh, the cases are usually pretty cut and dried as far as, you know, this person's gonna go to jail. They're going to prison, their life's gonna get messed up. And so if there's anything you can do to make that better, you know, uh, you start to feel sorry for people that are in trouble. Um, a lot of people, you watch Nancy Grace, not a lot of sympathy there, right? Just rah, rah, rah. But for me, I felt like She's a social doing worker. doing us women a disservice. We <laughs> got away from being called the B word. And she's I think she, she's doing bipeds a disservice. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. He needs to give but, her some marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's like that Bill Hicks bit, right? It's mandatory. Smoke <laughs> this. I like that. <laughs> Can you see her doing the, a, a show when she's high, maybe doing with Snoop Dogg? I'll bet you she'd be a set, so much nicer of a person if, <laughs> if she could just find something and just cut back a little bit on that Fair. shrieking. I don't know. <laughs> back to you. Yeah, right. You're talking about attorney and Nancy Grace and then I sidelined you. Sorry. Oh, not a problem. I, I practiced law for five years. Um, my mom got cancer, uh, and, uh, it was just, oh, thanks. Uh, it was very devastating. Uh, I loved her to death. Um, uh, it's hard to see it happen. And that's when you start to reevaluate your life, your life choices. You start thinking, am I really doing with my life what I want to do? And I, um, I always wanted to do certain things and I hadn't, it's weird when you, cause you go to law school you're doing seven years of, you know, the four years for the undergrad and the three years for law school. And you kind of, this is what I'm going to do. And then something like that comes along and you go, is this really how I want to spend my life? And uh, I kind of shifted out of that, became a teacher, which I ended up doing for 20 years. And then uh, while I was teaching, I was having so much fun in class and we were cracking jokes all the time. And there was a, another teacher, Devin Siebold, he's a headliner who moves around the country and he went from being a teacher to being a comic. And it was just like, huh, I guess I could do that. Um, so I went out to an open mic and usually that's all it takes. You know, you get out in front of the, you know, even if you bomb, just the fact that you got up in front of a group of people and you told your story, uh, it made all the difference in the world. I never thought of going backwards after that. I was just like, this is it. This is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. That's amazing because a lot of people get in there and then when the going gets rough, they step away for a while or a few times or for a few years or for 20 oh, yeah. years when it's yeah. rough. And you never did. Well, you think about, you think about those, particularly those first few years in and how much rejection you have, how many times you bomb, you don't have any good material. You're kind of trying to do anything you can to put something together. Uh, and then the local scene, it, I, I think every local scene has these people that just bash all the other comics and just make fun of them. And, you know, and I guess that makes them feel better about themselves, but yeah. it's tough. I, I, I'm surprised people stay with it as long as they do, because uh, there's so many things at the beginning and you just got to get through that. You got to just get past it and get on with your life. You just take it one step at a time, you know, 
you're working on five minutes, then you're working on 10, then you're working on 15 and 25 and on and on. You just do the best you can, you know? You can't get, you can't read too much into it. You just gotta go, don't look down, don't look up, you know, just take that, just keep going one step after another. That's how I think about it. And it makes it, it makes it doable for me. Yes. So the very first time that you went up on stage, how nervous were you before? Real bad? <laughs> yeah. You know, when Donald Trump does that thing about the journalists and he, you know, that thing, that's me. That's me. He's probably just making fun of me. I, <laughs> I went out there in a button down white shirt and I had no idea. It really, you don't need that many jokes to do five minutes, Not really. but you know, it's, it feels like it's going to be like you're crossing the Atlantic that first, you know, the first few times. And, and then, then you get to a point where it's like, then you got to learn not to keep talking when the light comes on and stuff like that. But, um, uh, when I first did it, I was I was shaking like a leaf. I had my notes on a piece of paper. Uh, there were all the jokes I was going to do. I had it looked like the Declaration of Independence. I had all of this just long thing, you know. And uh, but uh, but I made it through the first one. Uh, this and it was at this little bar. I had to drive 25 miles to get to. Did one night a week, and then um, they put me up first on my second set. And I thought the guy was being mean to me. And actually what he was doing, he was grooming me. He was saying, look, you got you to learn to get up there. And so, you know, that guy ended up being one of the first guys to hire me as a, as a host uh, to do a comedy show. And, you know, those little things, every, you never know. There are all these times when you go, I'm not going to go out tonight. I don't feel like it. I don't feel funny. I don't, I'm tired, you know. And then you go out anyway. And then you realize, wow, this thing happened to me. I had no idea it was going to happen. And it happened tonight. And if I hadn't gone out, you know, it makes, it makes a difference. In the, in the time that you've done comedy, what's something that someone has said to you, like in the aud- afterward, in the audience or another comic or a club owner that made you go, wow, it is all worth it? Well, I, I thought you were going to say negative. Uh, some lady called me old and weird. And I'm like, uh, I'm not weird. <laughs> second, I have to plug my computer. It's okay. Uh, as long as we're still hot. That's cool. Um, I've, I've worked with a number of headliners when I was hosting. And the ones that I really liked were the cool ones. It seemed like there was a reciprocal, or not reciprocal, I don't know forget the fancy word, the more talented they were, the less ego they had. And the more iffy they were, the more uptight they were, you know, and quick to like burn anybody below them so that they weren't blamed for a bad night. And I remember a headliner, I was up there, I did some stuff, you know, bonkers, right? I was up there doing a bonkers room and I had to host that night. And I had these comic cards I was supposed to do a little raffle for. And I got up there and I forgot my bucket. And uh, this headliner walked up. He went around and he got the comic cards. Well, I kind of like made jokes and kept them going and he got it and it was so smooth. Guy didn't need to do that for me. He could have just made a phone call. Yeah, this guy sucks. This guy's terrible. Uh, Get rid of this guy. Instead, he was like, yeah, here you go. Um, I think it's really cool when people that are headlining take a moment and say, listen, you're good. You've got talent. Keep going. Keep at it. You know, that little bit of, um, you know, encouragement makes, makes a huge difference. That's a beautiful story. Thanks. Are you at liberty to say who that headliner was that was so nice? Um, the guy who told me to keep going was Charlie Bowie, a uh, very funny guy. Uh, the guy that collected the cards was uh, Chris Gorges. Um, another guy who uh, helped me uh, is uh, he goes by the the name of Genesis, comedian Genesis. Funny guy, crushes everywhere he goes. And he t- took me aside and said, "Bill, I've seen 
you know, you make a lot of changes, like a lot of improvement, you know. I um, Another guy that I owe a lot to is Kevin White. Uh, he's fantastic. Um, he, he, like I said, he's the first guy who gave me uh, my opportunity to, to host. Um, I worked, let's see, I worked with Susan, I'm trying to remember her last name. She was in Eating Raul, uh, that movie from the 70s. Susan, I'm trying to remember the last, I'm sorry, I'm bad with names, but uh, she was, she you was just- You want me to look it like, up? Uh, yeah, yeah. Eating Raul? Yeah. She flew out, uh, did a show in Orlando, and she was so nice to me. I could not believe how cool she was. She played the nurse in that movie. It's a Susan, huh? Susan Sager. That's it. She's she is let, the coolest. She's going to let me interview her. Is she really? Yeah. Well, uh, you're going to love that interview. She is very soulful. She's Good. a real person. Uh, some people are so filled with demons. They're so competitive. And she is just the opposite. She's like Yoda. You know, she's love fantastic. those kind of people. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to love it. That's going to be a good interview. When you said Susan, I was going to say Sager. And I thought, no, it's probably not Sager. Why would it be Sager? <laughs> I, I thought know. about that. I thought about Bob Seeger. And I'm like, no, that's the guy with, you know, against the wind. So. <laughs> I'm really terrible with names. I've I've taught uh, four was it four thousand kids, twenty wow. years. Yeah, and um, you're I bad at math names. too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> but I'm just really not. Uh, I'm not good with names. I don't know why. <laughs> I can remember stuff out of books. I just can't remember like experience. It's all a blur. But um, I uh, yeah yeah names are tough. Names uh, are unless tough. the kid is weird. What's the <laughs> or if the name's really weird. Well, that's funny because uh, that was one of the oddities that I discovered when I was teaching is that like, for example, they're, everybody names their kid the same thing. And they think <laughs> that, you know, they're, oh man, watch this. You know, so you get like 50 Jasmines and Aliyahs galore and they're like 37 different ways to spell it. And it's like, and, and in the South, they're all Cody's and, you know, cooters and whatever so it's yeah. it's weird it's it's hard i had a class that had three stevens and two daniels and you know four jasmines and it's like i don't know how am i supposed to keep all this going i need to get like a blue you know like a uh, that little barcode put a barcode on them or something i don't know, <laughs> you know on me but oh. it, it's it's fun you do what you do you know you have a good time with it so do you do a podcast? You have a good voice. Oh, thanks. Uh, I have a podcast called uh, Carpooling with Myself. Oh, yes, and, right. uh, I saw that. I went out and bought, I, I got this, uh, if you're a gearhead, I got two uh, mics that I like. I have the uh, the ER20, right, and the, 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 the radio mic, and then I've got the uh, Shure SM7B, and I swap them off because I'm such a nerd. And uh, I get in the car and I have this little uh, bluebird, I think it's called. You pump that in there and you put it in a Zoom. You know, it looks like a tricorder at a Star Trek and you get going with that thing. I'll drive down the road and, you know, kill tons of people just trying to get back and forth from to and from school. But uh, I'll just go in. I'll, I'll just do a podcast and talk about what's going on. It's actually fun. I'm really just talking to myself, yeah. you know, it's like an elaborate way of, of trying to make that socially acceptable. Uh, so you but it, call it carpooling, but you're, you're not really technically allowed to carpool by yourself, but that's okay. <laughs> I you know. can't pull County I have What? Okay. <laughs> I have so many questions I want to ask, but they involve the law. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and you're an attorney, so I don't think I want to do this. <laughs> uh, you hey, can ask. You can ask. I would feel honored if you asked. Once you become an attorney, are you considered an attorney for life unless you get disbarred? Um, you're always a lawyer. You're always an attorney. What matters is whether you're licensed in the state where you're practicing. Okay. So, for example, if you have, are you in California? Nevada. Nevada, right. Sorry. So, like, if you ask me a question, 
I'm not licensed in Nevada, so you wouldn't be listening from an attorney that has, you know, yeah. you, you, know you take it with a grain of salt. Uh, yeah. You always want to consult uh, the local attorney that's licensed. But there's a lot of stuff that's, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's similar. Um, in the bar exam, you take two days. There's a multi-state, which is basically stuff that applies pretty much everywhere. And then, the, and then there's a state test the next day. So uh, I, I, um, I am a huge fan of attorneys if they are huge fans of Sonny and Cher. Ah, well, that's good because I am. I am a fan of Sonny and Cher. Do you know why? I, I watch them. Why is that? Because they're pro bono. <laughs> that's beautiful. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. It gets yeah. one. It gets one laugh. I haven't been able to work it into a bit yet very frustrating oh that's okay the day will come you'll find it i could do you know bono and bonobo but that's monkey sex and you know like it's just not worth the push <laughs> yeah right I'm gonna leave it right. with pro talk bono. about legal issues i think what you just said there was good Thank you. <laughs> you're looking for the right attorney <laughs> excuse me uh looking for pro bono yeah i think <laughs> You'll find it. You'll find it. Maybe what you should do is is change your. Maybe you're gonna change your name to to Bono, Ooh. and so they'll be pro Bono. I don't know. I like that. There's Maybe. an idea. Lame yeah. joke of the night. So there, there we go. go. I'm going to an attorney to change my name to be. I think Linda is a very good name. <laughs> speak any Spanish? I speak enough to be able to go down to across the border and get coffee. Well, that's all you need right there. <laughs> that's all you get after a year of Spanish in school is, uh, you know, Starbucks in, in Tijuana. But I'm uh, telling you, I'd rather speak nah. uh, Spanish Starbucks than Italian. Oh, yeah, confusing. right. Do you know well, what it's when, like when they call security and you've asked them for a $25 Venmo. <laughs> They're like, no, that's not how it works. So, okay, fine. <laughs> I tried. Oh man. Yeah. Well, Linda is uh, Spanish for cute, uh, lovely, adorable. You see a little, a little girl, Chica, ah, que linda, you know, something like that. So that's a good I name. Told, I said that to my mother when I found that out as a little girl. I came back and I go, hey, guess what? I found out Linda means beautiful in Spanish. And she said, well, right. you were born at night. <laughs> well, Bill, in English, is something you pay somewhere between the first and the 15th of the month. Yes, that's true. How's that feel? Um... I got, I got records. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I'm uh, a huge, I'm a bill collector. That's it. That's yeah. it. I've been collecting well, them. I, I just haven't gotten a letter opener yet. You know, it's funny because uh, you kind of wonder, you know, because people change their names for comedy and you're like, ah, oh, you know, if I were Billy, I'd see more, you know, exciting, you know, and William is more dignified and, but all, like all my heroes, a lot of my heroes were named Bill. He's like Bill Burr. I like Bill Maher. I think he's very funny. Um, Me too. Bill Cosby, before we found out all the bad stuff, yeah. was a legend. He was a great, great man. Uh, kind of yes. screwed that up. But uh, And then who else? There's another Bill in there. Well, there's Billy Crystal. So that's the oh, counter man. Well, You like said him. the magic word, Billy Crystal. Wasn't he like, great? Oh, my gosh. The best. Yeah. Oh, he, he, he did all this... He could do like stories and voices and one-liners and he's like the perfect host. I don't know why they don't have him host all the time. Oh. You know? He's so, his comedy is so smart. His acting is so deep. You know, I mean, it doesn't get better than Billy Crystal. Oh man. Yeah. When Harry met Sally, um, city slickers guys in, in tent. And it was really cool because you take you both sides, right? Like you go, you could be very funny and happy and then they could be some very, there's some poignancy where you feel, you know, some sadness. Uh, Billy um, Crystal could do that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever see the movie Mr. Saturday Night? Oh, my gosh. That is, see, people talk about uh, King of Comedy and they make this, that movie right there, Mr. Saturday Night. 
is the movie, I think. Uh, oh, comics movie. Because he nailed it. The narcissism, the anxiety, the insecurities, um, the people in your life that are sort of end up getting sucked in, you know, his relationship with his brother. That was a good movie. I really enjoyed that. What's your favorite thing that any comedian has ever said? Oh, uh, that's hard. That's there's so many, so many great ones. That uh, you I'll know, give like you. A, I'll give you a minute and I'll tell you mine. Okay. Billy well, Crystal. Tell me yours first, and I could, I could get inspiration gives, off yours. Yeah, it gives yours. you a minute to think of yours. When Billy Crystal said that he does an imp- he's going to do an impression of. He's gonna do an impression. You guys like impressions? Everybody clap. He goes, "I'm gonna do one of my Aunt Clara," and then they laughed on the phone. Uh, no, with his Aunt Clara doing Aunt Clara in Boca Raton. You know, his Aunt Clara from Boca Raton. Nobody knew what the impression was that he was doing. It was a spoof <laughs> on impression. And then he goes in this whole thing about how. She wore um, one of those moles, you know, she had a mole on her face, but yeah. if she was going to church, the mole would be over here. And, and then she'd <laughs> the mole be over. he knew where she was going based on where the mole was. And she looked very Kabuki theater. Oh, that's <laughs> Eyebr- great. Eyebrows and the mole. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, a, there's a comedian named Arj Barker. Arj and who? Arj it's really short for Arjun. He's, uh, his family's Indian. He grew up in America. Uh, and he, I think he kind of like anglicized it a little bit, Arj Barker. And um, yeah, cause I think his, I think his actual name is Arjun Singh. And he, you know, it's trying to, trying to fit in, I guess, but uh, he's not even in America now. He's over in Australia, but I was amazed at the quality of his work. And he used to do this thing talk about uh, global warming and he would it's really funny because he had like these puppy dog eyes and you you talk like global warming and he'd go off and say you know i think it's the sun that's where the heat's coming from you know and he'd go through his little it's very silly absurdist stuff and i kind of wish to see him more successful i never real. it's like you ever watch a comic and you go why isn't this person bigger you know yeah. why isn't this there's a guy right now who is finally getting his moment in the sun and his name is Preacher Lawson. I love him. Oh, good. I, I, uh, I worked with him on stage. Now, it doesn't mean I'm tight with him or something, but like, you know, I was coming up, he was the big guy and he would crush in every room that he went into. He looks like young Eddie Murphy, but he's got kind of a quality, like a Robin Williams quality where he's, he just goes right into, he goes right into act out and makes you know scenes and he's just amazing and just a really nice guy the guy doesn't swear at all uh that i'm aware of uh, i think his mom you know wanted you know he make her proud and so the guy goes in there uh completely swear free and just thunderously blows the whole room down and i just wow and he got on america's got talent and um uh, Comics don't usually win that stuff because, uh, you know, it's TV and they got a little, I think it's a scripted thing, but it's like, you know, it's always a cuter, there's always a cuter person than a, than a, than a comedian, but the guy is just utterly amazing. And now he's like circling all over the place. He bought his mom a house, uh, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. I, uh, I love to see, but I, I would watch him. I worked sort of in the same circle of people for like five or six years. And I kept wondering, is there a God? How could this guy be so talented and go completely unnoticed? And then it's that overnight success, right? Which is not really overnight. It's uh, the moment comes and, you know, one day nobody knew who you were and the next day everybody knows who you are. And that happened to him with AGT. And now like he, he goes all over to all the improvs and he, he's over, he went overseas and did some stuff in London and um, he's on HBO and this, this guy's blowing up. But it's like when you know, but that's the cool part now, but it's interesting, the character building part before any of that other stuff happens. When you realize 
this guy did, had no idea that he That's was going to exactly be. exactly what it is too. I mean, like it, it took me five and a half years to get laughs out of people throughout my set. You know, I'd get a laugh and a laugh and a lot of silence. And, and it isn't until the last six months here that people laugh through my whole set. <laughs> That's and cool. All that time, you know, while you're going through it, it's painful. But when you come out of it, you have some substance. Right. Well, it's something because open mics are laboratories. You're not getting paid anything. You're going in there to have a jury, to have people give you feedback. And so you could take anything you can try. And the worst thing is that once you start getting jokes that pop, then those are the only jokes you want to tell because you don't want to bomb. Right. So you kind of, and then, and then your progress is slow. I wrote more stuff in my first two years as a comic than, than probably all the other years combined because I was so intensely trying to get out of this hole I was in, right? And then, um, but it is interesting. If you take the open mic as this is a laboratory, I'm gonna try these experiments. If it doesn't work, I'll come back with more stuff tomorrow. That's fine. You only need one joke to work. You know, you're not getting paid for it anyway. So if you got something, then you go, ah, okay, this is gonna work. So that's cool because a lot of people go through that experience and then they feel bad about themselves. And they don't need to, but we all want to be stars, right? Yeah. Yeah. And our so ego. What do, you, what do you want out of comedy before you leave the earth? Um, I, I would like to have a body of work and I would like to be, um, you ever tell a joke and you're not proud of the joke because it's not a, it's, it doesn't meet your standards, but it's like, you got to laugh. And then you feel like you got to keep it because it's getting last, but it's not really what you want to do. I would like, strangely enough, I'd like to have my Netflix specials or my HBO specials. And if it's not Netflix, it could be, you know, my circle K, my Seven Eleven specials, whatever, what Amazon prime, you know, whatever it is. Uh, I would like to have a body of work that I can feel proud of. And I, I honestly, and I know this is kind of philosophical and religious, but I don't think we build anything. I think if we build, it's like sandcastles on the beach and then whoosh, it just gets wiped down. Anyway, I, for me, this is the fairy tale I tell myself that this is my experience to learn something. And so I'm doing stuff. Failure is not even an issue. That's, I don't care about it. I just want to do stuff and have the experience so I'm trying to build uh, a body of work and have stuff that I can feel proud of and be able to say, this is what I did, you know, but I don't really care if I ever make a movie or if I ever, um, there goes my wife. Sorry. Is that your wife? Yeah. Hi, wife. Hi, wife. What's your first name? Uh, uh, Sherry. Hi, Sherry. She, keep, she keeps me well grounded. She's I met tall. her. She's really tall for keeping you well grounded. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> I met her at BYU and uh, uh, I sat down with her. There's like all these beautiful people to date and no connection. Then I sit down with her. I'm feeling something. She goes, how many credits are you taking? I said, 18. She goes, that's stupid. I'm like, oh, I was hooked. Wow. <laughs> she wow. keeps me out of trouble. She keeps you humble. <laughs> yes, she does. yes, she does. Well, it's you've funny. been a, you, you go ahead and finish your thought. Oh, Sorry. I was just saying, it's funny. We have the people in our lives. Mm -hmm. Some people feel like those people are holding them back, you know, because they want to go out and they want to take over the world. But those are the people you come back to when you're bruised and battered and you had a bad set or some ta comics talking trash about you or you, you had a booking and it fell through. It's those people that knew you when you weren't doing comedy that actually are there for you. And so you, know, you should be for them because they're for you. And, you know, it is what it is. There you go. Wow. Taught me something. <laughs> <laughs> well, the interviews have to stay kind of short because uh, I pay a T-Mobile hotspot. It's pretty expensive. Oh, goodness. I can't have wow. Wi-Fi where I'm at. Don't even ask. It's a whole Oh, thing. my gosh. 
<laughs> so this has been wonderful, but I have to keep it short. And I understand. Have we gone almost an hour? No. Knowing my, me. My how time flies when we're having fun. It says 53 minutes since I've been on. Oh my gosh. So that we talked probably 10 or 12 minutes before we went live. Oh, that's probably what it is. And yeah. then I signed on for five, but still we went clear over 30 and oh I'm my trying God. to keep them to 15, but oh, yeah. I never do. About half of what I said. <laughs> no, this is great. You've been a doll. If there's any, now that you're, you know, this is comic spot. And uh -huh. now that you are a graduate, Bill Kirkpatrick, you're a graduate of comic spot. So anytime you want to come on and plug something, your podcast or Oh, a wow. show you're going to do. Tell me yeah. about five minutes. Come on and tell people about something going on. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. I really appreciate that. It's really nice of you. Cool. I've had fun with you. You're a great guy. Well, thanks, Linda. You are a wonderful person. I really appreciate all that, the, all that you've done. It's, it's, it's been you. a joy. It's been fun doing this. I'm having a blast. This is the time of my life. This and getting on stage. If I couldn't do this and I couldn't get on stage, I'd be in a world of hurt. Yeah, isn't that something? It really does give a lot back. And that's the right attitude. That's the attitude that takes you to the next step, you know? Thank Is that you. You do it because it's authentic and holistically good for you. Oh, man. You know what comes out so of it great. comes out of it. You never know. I, exactly. You know, it, so I see some people trying to do this, you know, and they're like, trying to get money more than they're trying to connect with people and touch lives, you know, and it's yeah. like. There are a lot of people trying to climb up very, very quickly. And it's like, nah, you should try to be funny first and, yeah. and just take it one step at a time. The I've got, I started making these zoom calls when the pandemic, well, I, I interviewed in Portland before I got to Vegas, but when I, the first few Zoom calls I made is because I wanted to see how people were doing. I wanted to see their face and know that they're okay. Because you know how we've been around people who have offed themselves. Yeah. And this was a very depressing time. And I'm very pro not taking your life. You know, like, um, I'm always concerned that I've had a couple of very close comedy friends that have taken their life. Wow. And so Sorry. I was checking in on them with Zoom and found that people went from just so hopeless to feeling so reconnected with the moment they started doing comedy, how they felt, I don't know, reconnected with their passion. It, it was like a blessing to me to check in and ask questions and try to, you know, like just see how people were doing what are they planning on doing after the pandemic you know because like you're stuck in this the world is holding still and you don't know when it's going to end and maybe by yeah. me asking some questions i can get them to get out of the muck and mire that they're in i don't know that was my hope by doing this that's good that's right we're medicine men and medicine women that's what we do people are going through tough times and we cheer them up you know, that's it. I'm glad you do that. I think that's really important. And I, I always wanted to that. be around the most hurting people in the world. And I started comedy, you know, and it was like the people that came to the clubs weren't hurting. I wanted to go to where they were really hurting, like um, battered women's shelters and homeless shelters and VA hospitals. And, and now people are hurting everywhere. I can do comedy on the Vegas strip to anybody walking by. Everybody needs con it's like everybody's hurting right now. Comedy should be taking off. Yeah. Um, I think you're right. And they, they don't always look at it as an essential uh, thing. And I think that's unfortunate because, you know, that's when things go bad, people feel bad and you can't fix a lot of the things that go bad. And, uh, you know, people turn to drugs, they turn to alcohol, uh, you know, they used to be able to go to the movies and do extreme sports and all that. And it's out of their lives. And it's comedy is one of the ways in which we cheer ourselves up. And it's very communal. You know, when a show's going well, it's very loving. There's a, there's a warmth to the show. Uh, and it, and, it, and people are missing that. 
And you can't get that watching cable, you know, bam, you know, uh, you can get 300 specials on Netflix. I sound like a Netflix uh, guy, but you get like 300 of them, but it's not the same as being in an actual uh, comedy show. Wow. You know? And so uh, I think- We all feel like birds good. right now that have had our wings clipped. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And, and I think what you're doing is a good idea. And I hope you continue to do it with as many people as you can reach, because I think, uh, I know I feel better. I, my spirit is higher. Uh, since coming on here and having a conversation with you. I don't know if it's, it's nice, you know. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I, I want to reach as many people as possible, and I want other people to do it with the same passion, you know, to try to cheer people up and bring them out of the funk that's going on. That's right. That's a very critical thing, uh, maybe the most in, in many ways. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Don't forget to hit me up when you want to plug something or promote something. Absolutely. And, and by the way, I don't know if you ever come out to Florida, but if you do, uh, I produce shows. Uh, I, uh, I go out to all the places that are not as connected. Tampa and Orlando, they're, they've got their little hierarchies. I go out to all the empty spots of Florida, uh, but they're still, you know, they're still paid shows and people's sometimes are the best shows because people are hurting for entertainment, uh, which is my opportunity. There you <laughs> go. The ones that really hurting. So, uh, <laughs> <Get the hurting. laughs> yeah. So if you ever come out to Florida, just let me know. And, um, uh, I could, you know, it's one of those clustered things where you could get, you know, I can get some money off this show. I can get some money off this show. And it, you know, sometimes it helps pay part of the expenses of the trip. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm, th I'm, tr I'm thinking about taking a year away from living in a city and going around the country, maybe finding a, a headliner that wants a host or, you know, a headliner yeah. and a feature that want to host, you know, to go along with them. But I'm, I'm well, ready to do the country. Yeah. If you ever come out to Florida, I'll be happy to put you on as a host. If Thank you want to host. So much. Yes, My I do. pleasure. Yay. Thank you so much. <laughs> I did it at Harvey's Con. Club, so but I want to go out and do it again as many yeah. places as I can. Thank well, you that's so really much. Cool. My pleasure. Thank you, Linda. See you later. It's been fun. See you later. Tell she is it Sherry your wife? Yeah. Tell her goodbye. So <laughs> See you okay. later. See you later. Bye bye. Everybody's talking at the comic spot. The comic spot.